This is a physics question from class, but I think it really helps us kind of formulate a bunch of ideas about circuits, and they're not terribly complicated circuits. We can do this problem to its fullest extent. The question starts off like this with these two circuits. I have a 10 volt battery, I have a 10 volt battery, and then I have two light bulbs, which we can assume are just ohmic resistors, or just resistors. So in this case, A and B light bulb A and B are connected right there, and here A and B are connected right there. The first question was, which bulb in this circuit, one, this is system one, and this is two, which one in system two is brighter, A or B? Now, there was some discussion about this question, A or B is brighter. The answer is they're the same, okay, they're the same. But there was a discussion like, well, this is the positive side of the battery because it's longer, so that means that the electrons are coming out of this side, so that one's going to get electrons first and then that one, and so that one's going to be brighter. Some other people said, no, I think it's coming out the positive side, so that one's going to be brighter. But, you know, you can't think of a light bulb as uh, something that takes electrons and uses them like fuel. That's not what it does. A light bulb, in fact, is just a wire. An incandescent light bulb is a wire. Think of it as a flow of electrons around a complete loop like that, okay? So if that's the case, and there's a great FET simulator that shows this, you can see the charges moving, but these charges are moving through here, and since it's one single loop, the, uh, the current has to be the same through both of the bulbs, and in fact, the current's the same through the whole circuit. And we define current, I, as the flow of charge, dq dt. So if these two have the same current flowing through them, they're going to heat up the same amount and they're going to have the same brightness. Okay. Now, we want, so those are the same brightness. We're going to get to circuit two uh, in a second. I'm going to delete that and rewrite it, uh, but that's circuit two. The next question is, what's the voltage across each bulb? What's the current through each bulb? And what's the power? So we're going to do that for system one and then we'll do it for system two. Okay. Um, and I picked 10 volts for the battery. Let's just pick each resistor as 10 ohms also. So let me write that right here. Uh, R equals 10 ohms. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that. We'll, we'll redraw that picture up here uh, once we get to it. So the first question is, uh, what's the voltage across each bulb? Now we have a bunch of rules here. Number one is uh, Ohm's law. So Ohm's law, so I actually have the definition of current. I is delta Q delta T. I have Ohm's law. It says that I'm going to write it as V, even though it's change in V, it's really a change in V. It says that the potential across a resistor is I times R. So if you have a current going through a resistor I, then it would have a voltage drop of V. Now that's going to be negative if it's in the same direction as the current and positive if it's in the opposite side. Next, we have the junction rule. This says I in is equal to I out. So if I have any two or more wires connected together, the current flowing into that junction has to be the current flowing out. So if I have two wires connected, then the sum of these two currents would be that current. And then finally, you have the loop rule. This says that uh, delta V loop equals zero. Remember that the voltage we can find from the electric field. So if you, if you add up the change in voltage around a loop, because the electric field is conservative, for the most part there is a special case, uh, you get zero. So if I add up the voltages around that loop, I get to zero. Those are really the only things that we need. Let's go ahead and look right here and write down, there, there's a junction here, so I can call this the current I, but if I look at like in between the two resistors, well, the current coming into that point has to be the current coming out. So right there, the current in the two resistors is the same, same current, okay. Now the loop rule, we can write that by starting and going around the loop. We can start wherever we want as long as we end in the same spot. So let's say I start right here and I go this way. You can go any direction. I'm gonna go across the battery. Let's say, so it's gonna be a positive 10 volts. I'm just gonna write that as VB, the voltage across the battery. Now I'm going with the current in the same direction. The voltage drop across this resistor is gonna be minus IR. And then the voltage drop across that resistor is also gonna be minus IR. Same current, same, this happens to have the same resistance. And then I get back to here, so it'll have to be zero. 
So I know VB, I know R, I can solve this for I. So let's just move both of those to the other side. I get VB equals 2IR. I is VB over 2R. And then I can actually do that. That's going to be 10 volts divided by 2 times 10 ohms. And that's 5 amps. Wait, I'm sorry. 0.5. Ooh, it's a half an amp. Right, 10 divided by 20. So that's the current. So I went and found the current first. They have the same current. These are light bulbs in series. Things that are in series have, they're connected end to end, so they have to have the same current. Now we can go back up here and find the voltage across A. Well, I can just use Ohm's law. So VA is going to be R times I, such so it's going to be one half amp times 10 ohms, which is five volts. If I do the same thing for VB, this is capital B, right? So that's the light bulb, not that bulb. It's going to be IR. It's the same thing. But that makes sense too, right? If that's 10 volts and I make it around a loop, that has to be five, that has to be five. They have to be the same because of the same resistors. Let's calculate the power. The power in in each bulb. So we calculate power as IV. I, I'm going to go ahead and use this expression for I just because uh, I want to. And I'm going to use this expression for the voltage across A. So this is going to be um, no, I'm going to use VA I want to write it this way. Let's, let's write it, okay. Let's write this as, let's write that as VA. So I have I times VA. So I VA is going to be I times I times R, or I squared R. And they have the same power because they have the same current and they have the same resistance. So this is going to be equal to uh, 1 half squared, so 1 fourth times 10, or 2.5 watts. Okay, so the current was uh, one half amp. The voltage was five volts. The power was 2.5 watts. Not too bad, right? I do want to show you one thing because here, um, because they have uh, the same current, I can actually factor that out. And I can write this as, uh, I could I can write this equation. Let me just delete this stuff. I can say VB equals I times R plus R. That's what we have. It's possible that I could replace those two resistors with a single resistor. R equivalent. And in that case, it has to, in order to have the same current, I, R equivalent, that circuit would look like this. VB is I, R equivalent. So R equivalent would be R plus R. So it's a sum of the resistors. So if I have two resistors in series, I can replace that with one resistor that has the sum of the two resistances. In fact, it doesn't really matter how many resistors I have in series. If they're all in series, I just add up their values, and it's the same as having one single resistor of that value. Okay. But that's for uh, a circuit in series. Now let's switch to the other one. Now there was, there was one other question, and it said, what would happen if, you, if one of the bulbs burnt out? So what if this one burns out like that? So a burnout in an incandescent bulb, usually that wire just breaks. And so you don't have a complete circuit anymore. If you do not have a complete circuit, then um, the current's going to be zero. And so if the current's zero, then this one has no current through it, uh, and it doesn't light up. So both of them go out if, if one burns out. I would like to point out, though, that the loop rule still works. If I go around here and I have 10 volts, there's no current through this one right here, so it has no volts. But that gap will also have a 10 volt a gap, a negative 10 volts. So you still have 10 minus 10 equals zero. It still works. Okay. Now let's go and switch this to the other circuit and then we'll do our same thing. 
I'm going to leave those answers there because we're going to use them to compare. So here I have A, and then here I have B. And this is now circuit 2. And so which bulb is going to be brighter in this case? Let's go ahead and use our loop rule again. Um, but before I do that, I want to uh, write down some things I, right? So here I have a uh, current I coming in, but now I have a junction. So at this point, the current coming in has to equal the current coming out. But this is going to have a current, and that has a current, and they're different things. So th I, let's call this one I2, and let's call this one I1. So if I look at the junction rule at this point, I can say I equals I1 plus I2. And I want to find those currents because that tells me the brightness, right? But that equation right there has three things I don't know. I don't know I, I don't know I1, I don't know I2. You can't use I from the past, the past situation because it was a different problem. Okay, so I have those currents. Now that's one equation. If I want to solve for everything, I need three equations, right? Three variables, three equations. So I need two more equations. Well, I actually can get some loops here. I, in this circuit, there are three loops. I could go one, two, three. But I only need two of them. So let's start right here. I'm going to go around this way. I'm going to do the big loop. So the big loop, if I go this way, I'm going to start right here, and I have the voltage across the battery. There's no resistor here, so that I doesn't do anything. And then I'm going to go down here, and I have minus I to R, and then I get back to where I was, and I get zero. Well, yeah, I do need three equations, three unknowns, but that one only has one variable in it, so I actually can solve it. So let's solve this for I2. VB equals I to R, and then if I divide both sides by R, I get I2 equals VB over R. So let's plug that in, 10 over 10, 1 amp. So that's for that bulb right there. Now let's do this loop using this one right here. I have VB minus I1R equals 0. So it's the same equation. I1 is 1 amp also. But what does that make the current coming out of the battery? Well, we have to have I is equal to 1 plus 1, 2 amps. So in the second case, the current coming out of the battery was 2 amps. Now let's use that and go back and find the voltage across each bulb. I mean, we kind of already did that, but we're going to do it again. So if I want the voltage across this bulb right here, V1 is going to be I1 times R. So I1 was 1. R is 10, that's 10 volts. And the same thing over here, V2 is I2R, which is also 10 volts. So the voltage across these, is, each one of those is 10 volts. What about the power? So let's calculate the power for uh, 1 and 2. So the power for 1 is going to be uh, I1 V1. We already said V1 was 10, I1 is 1, so this is going to be 10 watts. P2 is I2, V2, 10 watts. So here we get a, a power for each bulb of 10 watts. That's the, that was the total current, so I should put that as just the current per thing. That, for, for the circuit 1, half amp was the total current. Uh, the total power for the first case was 2.5 plus 2.5. They each had 2.5 watts, so that's 5 watts. Here I have tw 10 watts and 10 watts, so it's 20 watts total. Which one's brighter? Well, these have the same current to the same brightness, um, and, but they're both brighter than the one in, in system 1. Okay. Now, could we write a single circuit that looks like this? has the same battery, it has only a single resistor, we'll call it R equivalent, 
but it has the same battery voltage, it has the same current. So from the battery's perspective, it looks the same. Um, well, this would say VB minus IR equivalent is equal to zero. Or uh, I is equal, IR equivalent, I'll just put E, is equal to VB. I, I'm going to solve this for I, and you'll see why in a second. I is VB over R equivalent. Now back over here, I knew that I equals I1 plus I2. That was my junction rule. Could I find an expression for I1 right here? Yeah, I can do that. We did that from the loop rule. I said VB minus I1 R equals 0. So I1 is equal to VB over R. And I did the same thing for resistor 2. VB minus I2R equals 0. So I2 is VB over R. Now if I put this, this, and this into this equation, I get VB over R equivalent, right, because that's what this is, is equal to I1, which is VB over R, plus VB over R. I can divide both sides by VB, and I get the following relationship. 1 over R equivalent is 1 over R plus 1 over R. So I can indeed find equivalent resistance for parallel resistors. That's, those are parallel resistors. The two ends share ends, right? Now let's just check that out for this case. So 1 over R equivalent is 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10. And so 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 is, don't get your calculator, you can do that. It's 2 over 10 or 1 over 5. So 1 over R equivalent is 1 over 5. That means that R equivalent is 5 ohms. So when you add resistors in parallel, you reduce the effective resistance. When you add them in series, you increase the effective resistance. Let me just remind you why that makes sense. Um, if you think about the resistivity of a wire, so if I have a wire like this, and it's made of some material, so it has some resistivity rho, uh, and it has a length L, and then it has a cross-sectional area A, the resistance of that wire is rho L over A. So if I increase the length, I increase resistance. So what if I double, what if I double the length of this? If I double the length of that, it would look like this. L, L. So the resistance of that, and this is like a resistor, that's like a resistor, it looks like it's in series. So in this case, uh, it would be R is rho times 2L over A, which is R plus R. Okay. What if I put them in parallel? If I put two resistors, two wires in parallel like this, what am I doing? I'm doubling the area. So if you double the area, you reduce the resistance by half. Now, the one we did had re equal resistances, right? In general, the resistance for parallel resistors is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. They don't have to be the same, but it will reduce the overall resistance. Okay, very simple circuit. I think it can kind of help us see some things about circuits, so uh, hopefully that helped.